Good morning, everyone. I want to thank, welcome everyone this morning, and welcome any visitors that are here. That feel free to join in. I was asking the Lord what He wanted me to share on, and the, the word unity just kept coming up all week and different things. And I know what we're facing in the world right now that unity is not where it should be right now. It just seems like everyone's pulling in different directions. And first, I wanted to start with a story. It says, this story is of a young boy who visited his uncle, a lumberjack. At the lumber camp, the boy saw a massive tree standing alone on the top of a hill. He enthusiastically pointed out to the tree that, to his uncle, saying, Look at that big tree. It will make a good, good lumber, won't it? His uncle looked down at the boy and shook his head. No, son, that tree will not make a lot of good lumber. It might make a lot of lumber, but not a lot of good lumber. When a tree grows off by itself, too many branches grow on it. Those branches produce knots when the tree is cut into lumber. The best lumber comes from the trees that grow together and grows. The trees grow taller and straighter when they grow together. And that kind of comes goes along with what we faced in COVID. You know, it kind of separated us and t tore us apart, and it wanted to separate us, and it caused a, dis a lot of disunity, I thought through that situation because he separated us and we were trying to stand our own. We didn't have anybody to lean on. That's what the church is about. I mean, we need people in church to go back and lean on and and share with our problems and our, our, our life changes and different things that are going on. And it's just a lot of different things that we're facing right now through the through the situation with the the way the world stands right now, especially with the upcoming election, it seems like everybody is pulling in different directions. And you know, if we just lean on God for direction and not a, things you see on news and things you hear, and you know, He's the only one that you can actually trust in and rely on on the, on the truth that we need in that situation. And the church is, needs to be more united now than it's ever been. Because we're going to be facing a lot of the things coming up, especially it depends on how the election goes. And unity is going to be a very big, important part of that. And even, you know, even when God was getting his disciples around, he said, The Savior prayed for unity among his disciples, that they may all be one as thou. Father art already in me and in thee, that they also may be in one in us. But the gospel creates a unity of faith with our Father and our Savior. And fellow believers, you know, if you don't, you need you need unity in your. I mean, even in a family that, if you don't have unity in family, you don't have anybody that you can turn back to and you can actually share with and trust in what you share with them that they're not going to use it against you or work against you in any way. That it's somebody you can go back to and and work with. And I, he's always and even and forgiveness is the biggest part of unity. I think. I mean, if if you don't forgive a person when they do do something wrong with you, you're you know it's always going to be back in your mind. You know, I remember what he did with me. You know, if you don't forgive, you're not going to have unity. And same thing with the church and family and in business or whatever it may be. If you don't forgive and forget, as they say, you're not you know things aren't going to work the way they should. You know, the Savior even when he was hanging on the cross, he was. He said, Our Savior demonstrated the power of forgiveness throughout His sacred life in the midst of agony of the cross. He cried out, Father, give them, for they know what they do. Because of His anointment and the forgiveness it makes available, we can be made clean through sincere repentance and obedience and someday become fully united with Him. You know, if we're not willing to forgive and forget and, and work together and pull together, just like they talked about the, with the tree standing by itself, you think, you know, he's he's growing big and tall, but he he needs other people with him. You know, it seems like the world wants to separate people and pull people away. And I don't know, it's the devil working against us in that in that situation. And the biggest part in that whole situation is the I think the family is the most important part of that too. That if you don't have family and you don't have a tight knit family and you're able to go to them and with your problems, you know, the family is the, the soul of the, the soul of the church, and if we need to be able to keep 
keep our young ones keep coming and not let them tear you away. I know you can you can teach your kids all you want to teach them, but it, they make choices on their own. We pray that they turn back to church and you know do what they they're supposed to do. But it, we can do what we can, but that's just totally up to them. But one thing we can remember is that God is always with us, and all we have to do is turn to Him if in, in times of trouble. And I wanted to read one last passage in closing. It comes out of Colossians 3, 12 and 14. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, close yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you have a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on the love which binds them all together in a perfect unity. Uh, that's all I had to share. Dave, you want to come in? Oh, Brian, yeah. Sorry about that. I'm staring right at you, and I was like, yeah. <laughs> Dear Lord, thank you for another opportunity to gather again this morning. And Dear Lord, just be with Brother Brian as he brings this message across to us that we maybe take it to heart and, and apply it to our lives. And just be with him to take away the fear of man and the understanding that you have given him and what do you want him to share this morning. Let's be with him and help him through this time. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Good morning, church. I um, want to announce uh, children don't leave for uh, Kids Connection until after the, uh, the shoe boxes. The, uh, they want to share something about that. So don't leave right away, okay? Um, when Donald was sharing about unity, um, Donald puts it in practice that mornings he comes into the elders meeting, first thing he does is pulls Todd's ear. So him and Todd have a great relationship. Um, and so uh, unity um, is good. I want about the pastor's uh, appreciation thing. Um, you know, Paul in Acts chapter, I forget what chapter, when he was leaving those people, his relationship was so tight with those people. And it was prophesied that they would never see each other again. Um, and I just want to thank you as a congregation um, for walking with us um, through this journey on this side of heaven. Uh, we're not perfect. Um, you know us better. And when when a visitor pastor comes, or when we go somewhere else, all those people see is a good good things. They don't see us, but you see us. You know who we are, and and we have weaknesses. And thank you for walking with us. Um, Dave probably has less than I do, but. Uh, but we do have weaknesses. Um, but thank you for appreciation. And I think that started, I researched this morning. How did that get, get started, uh, Pastor Appreciation Month? It started in 1992, uh, focused on the family, kind of uh, headed that up um, to appreciate pastors. Paul was kind of, kind of researched it a little bit. Paul was, he advocated for pastors to be um, reimbursed for their time. Um, he used the metaphor of, uh, of the law of Moses um, with the oxen. Don't, you know, back then, they, when the oxen would work uh, in the grain, they would, they would muzzle the ox so they wouldn't eat, the ox wouldn't eat. He said, he said don't do that. Don't do that to the, to the pastors. Let them eat. They need to eat. Um, and so to eat, it takes uh, provision. And, uh, but then Paul in Acts, he also, for him, he, didn't, he was a tent maker. He made his own way. And he provided. He didn't want anything to hinder his ministry. Um, he wanted to be real. He wanted to be sacrificial. He wanted to do anything he could. He said, for the weak, I want to be weak. To the Jew, I want to be Jew, and so forth. He wanted to reach where people were.
for the sake of Christ. And, uh, and I think that's where our heart is. Um, and that's who I want to be authentic. I want to be real. I want to walk the trenches of life with all of you. Um, because it can get tough. It can get overwhelming sometimes. But the Lord is faithful. He is faithful. Um, he'll, he'll meet us where we're at. Let's come to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we uh, thank you for your goodness. Lord, you have proven over and over that you are so good and you are so faithful. Even in the, um, the circumstances of, of life that are tough, you're there. And I pray today that there will be no idle word spoken. I pray that every word will glorify you and will be truth. Because truth sets us free. And Lord, I just pray for this congregation. If there's any heaviness on our lives, we'll be lifted up, lifted off by the power, by the blood of the Lamb, power of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. You transform, you comfort, you counsel us. And Lord, we uh, want to honor you. Father, we love you. In your name we pray. Amen. If you want to turn to Revelation chapter um, 2, first seven verses. Um, yesterday morning, I went to down to, uh, to the river. And uh, you see that picture there. Uh, Larry Loring has some property down by the river. And just uh, walking the river. Sometimes in life, uh, we forget where we've been, uh, what the Lord has done. Um, we walk away. And the heaviness comes about. But the grandsons, there was a time, um, they still do some, but the grandsons, uh, Larry and Lorraine's grandsons, they would, there was a time they would spend a lot of time there. And... Uh, Lord just showed me. Um, they would catch fish. They would have fun. Set trot lines, limb lines. And life comes. Girlfriends, marriage. Um, other things become priorities. But you know, the fish are still there. The river is still there. If they would go back, they could still catch fish. They could still, and they, they do some. You know, in life, sometimes we forget where life comes from. Let's uh, read where Jesus tells the, the church of Ephesus um, where they lack. To the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your deeds, your hard work, 
and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate people, that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not, and have found them false. You have persevered and have endured, endured hardships for my name, and have not grown weary. And Jesus says, Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. But you have this in your favor. You hate the practices of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Whoever has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is the paradise of God. I was listening to a clip yesterday. Um, it was just a neat metaphor. You know, the, the fish is made for the water. And a tree is made for the ground. And us as people are made to be united with the Father. You know, if you take a fish out of the water, it'll flop for a bit. But it's made, the gills, it, God created to have the water flow its, through its gills, and it, it gets oxygen from the water, and that's how it survives. And the oxygen goes through its bloodstream. If you take it out of the water, it dies. Same way with the tree, pull it at the roots, the tree and the roots out of the ground, the nu nutrients in the, the water and where it gets its moisture, it dies after a bit. Same way with us. If we have lost our first love, we will die slowly. If it, or, and then we start putting on the same thing, the Pharisees and the things, uh, religious acts, we try to fulfill things. It comes out of performance. It comes out of um, works. And we don't like to go to church. It was last Sunday or Sunday before, the Spirit just spoke to me. Do I and how many of us here really want to be here? It is, is it a drag? You know, when it becomes like that, we lost our uh, first love. Jesus said, it will take the lampstand away from us. I've been there. I've been in sin where he takes the anointing away. He takes the favor away. It's not a good feeling. But praise the Lord for repentance. Jesus talks about, about the two commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. And if we walk in that and we have a desire for the one, we are the 99 and we have the desire for the one that is lost, that's a good place to be. A couple weeks ago, we was working in Daytona Beach in Florida and uh, it was a little hard, difficult job and there were just two of us. And a homeless guy came and asked if he could help. And uh, there was di there's been different times that homeless people come and they just, you know, they're just there, they just want money. But there's been times where people came that the Lord would send that we really needed help. And that was one of the times. But this homeless guy, I got to learn to know him throughout the night. He wasn't strung out. 
He has had a hard life. He was about um, 57 years old and uh, had a couple of daughters, adult daughters in North Carolina. And uh, he was the one for me that night. There's people walk around us all the time like that. We just open our eyes. If we spend time in communion with the Father and love Him with all of our heart, soul, and mind, then we can love our neighbor as ourselves, the one, and have unity with all. It's great to have great relationships. It is beautiful. A couple of weeks ago, we watched... Uh, Sharon and I don't watch movies very often, but when we do, we would like to watch something that's edifying. And uh, what was the movie called? Well, the Sound of Hope. It was the people in East Texas back in the 90s where this uh, African-American church, small church, where God put it on the, the heart of the pastor uh, or the pastor's wife first to adopt children and the whole ch church bought into it and for us all over they adopted 77 uh, children um, over a few years and uh, but uh, the love they had for each other it was it was a pretty picture the struggles that they helped each other with they held each other up, helped each other. Same way that we can experience today. You know, we can we can have all these things. We can work hard. We can have all these programs, but if we don't have first love. The first love we have for the Father, with all of our heart, it's nothing. And if we don't repent, um, Jesus said, the lampstand will be removed. And that's our light. That's our anointing. We want His favor. We desire His favor. You know, the first thing we know, we're 30 years old, 40, 50, 60, and 70. And where has life gone? First thing, yeah, first thing we do, where has life gone? Have children, grandchildren. It just flies by. That's the reason Scripture talks about make the most of every opportunity. Redeem the time. Redeem the time. Make use of all the time. And, and the time, the time it means also Jesus, he rested. He went to the wilderness. He went, I don't know how much time he spent in the wilderness to rest. I think we can rest fishing. I think we can rest doing things. We can rest driving a tractor down the cornfield. We can rest. We can be satisfied. We can be rooted in the ground. If you want to turn to uh, Ezekiel chapter 37, Ezekiel chapter 37, 1 through 6, 11 through 14, 
It says, the hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out of the spirit by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of the valley, and it was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones in the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh among you, among, upon you, and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you, and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say our bones are dried up, and our hope is gone, and we are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says, My people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I'll bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you and you will live. And I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I have done it, declares the Lord. You know, I, I have seen this over and over. If we speak, live. When I, when I walk to turkey barns, I've learned to speak, live. And I've seen work by speaking. It's nothing, nothing from me. That's who the Lord is. That's the power of your words. That's why it's very important to not speak death. Not to speak to our children, you'll always be like this. Or speak, speak to someone else. Yesterday, um, I was speaking to someone that was struggling. And I told him, I know your struggles, because I've been there. But God has created you more than this. Lord gives us um, Matthew warnings to be authentic. Matthew 7, he says, you know, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. You know, I can preach, I can act the right way, I could do all the right things. And you'll even, you'll even say all kinds of good things about me. And I could hear those words. I never knew you. We can be that false. So it's very important we all ask the Lord to help us to be authentic. And then he went to say, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and drive out demons and miracles, do miracles? And he said, then I'm going to tell them plainly, I never even knew you.
I don't know where to go from here. I have some more scriptures, but I want to play that song. And, and if you guys can all stand, you can sort of rise and stand and just ask the Lord to minister to you. And be authentic. If the Lord asks you to come to the altar, be authentic, be obedient. But don't don't feel no obligation to for performance. Lord, I just ask you to open that our hearts be open. And I don't know where you want to go from here, Lord. But I know your word says, who has an ear, let him hear. And we all, as far as I know, can all hear today. We can hear physically, and we can hear eternally. Internally in our hearts. Lord, I just pray our hearts will be open and we let you dissect our heart and we respond to it. So just listen to the Father. And if you want to come to the altar, that's fine. If not, that's fine also, okay? No play. And uh, and works comes from is the, the spirit of rejection from the womb to now. And now that spirit of rejection, we let the enemy have a foothold, and we're always trying to prove ourselves. We always want to hear ourselves do well. And we're always trying to attain a certain pedestal and, and try to hang that over other people. And we get offended very easy. That's the reason when Jesus spoke to the religious people, they were offended. Because they were doing it for the wrong reasons. The enemy will use anything it becomes a toehold and a foothold and a stronghold in our lives. And we're trying always to cover that up. I want to live. I hope that is every one of our cry. We want to live. We want to live with purpose. We want to be grounded like the tree is grounded, rooted where it's supposed to be, and like the fish, where it's supposed to be, where it was created to be, and like us, where we're created to be, united with the Father. And Jesus has made that possible. In John chapter 21, when Jesus reinstates Peter, he says, When they finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? I don't know if he was talking about fishing or what he was talking about. Whatever Peter or Jesus was pointing to in Peter's life. And Peter says, yes, Lord. Because this is after Peter denied Jesus. This was after resurrection. Peter said, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said, Feed my lambs. And again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. You know, sometimes we have to ask our children 
multiple times the, the same question. Make sure they get it. And that's what I think Jesus was doing here with Peter. Well, you know, Jesus knew, obviously. You know I love you, Peter said. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time. I say probably through Peter's mind, was through his mind, this is a short period of time, probably racing through the times that he denounced, denied Jesus. And it really bothered him. You know I love you, Peter said. Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said, feed my sheep. That's what we're here for. People to feed each other, comfort each other, and love each other deeply. Because love covers a multitude of sins. It forgives each other the shortcomings of each other. I know we can rub each other the wrong way. That's, I know it gets ugly. And, and even in our family life, our closeness of family, it sometimes gets ugly, but it can be beautiful. We can love each other deeply. Love you all. And thanks again for the appreciation that you're showing us. We just want to walk with you. Simply as that. It's what God has called us to do. Okay? Thank you, Father, for your love for us. And Lord, you are faithful, and but we pray that we remain faithful. Lord, we want to walk with you. There is no other place there is no other place but be in communion with you. There is none other place like it. Because this time on earth is so short. But it's so great that we can, we can uh, you have brought heaven down. And we can have that joy. You gave us the keys. And we can, and you gave directions to your believers not just to the preachers, not just to the leaders, but you gave, you gave the keys to the believers to cast out demons and to pray over, lay hands, and to provide miracles. It's because of you, Jesus. You gave us that authority to all of your bride. You are our husband, and we are your bride, and we want to be beautifully adorned for you. Lord, thank you for providing a way, your love for us. In your name we pray. Amen. Lord bless you.